Filipino giving me suits, gangster suits. This interview with Kathy Scott, and I like Kathy. Kathy's uh, appeared in a couple of my documentaries, and you know things was uh, you know really good. And I thought that the information that she was bringing it was decent. Okay, uh, one of the things about Kathy Scott, like I said, I like Kathy. And one of the things about Kathy Scott, though, if you want to talk about inconsistencies, is her inconsistency on what she says in one documentary to the next. It's like she's playing uh, uh, her, her uh, uh, card hand above the table and then below the table, okay? A hand on top and a hand underneath. In our documentary, uh, Tupac Assassination Reckoning, we did not edit or cut anything in this documentary here concerning Kathy Scott. The reason that we did not is because we want to show where she told us what her beliefs were about Orlando Anderson and about things that happened um, that uh, led up to it and that uh, happened at the MGM. Then she turned around just a couple of weeks ago um, in 2009 and told Anton Beatty something completely different. Uh, I listened to her interview, and I listened very carefully to it, and her inconsistencies are bad. Uh, the information in her book is bad, okay? And I'm not, I'm not dinging her book or anything like that. Uh, you know, no different than uh, the family, the estate. I don't like the fact that she put that autopsy picture in her book with Tupac, and I personally had told her that, and I asked her why did she do that, and the only motive that I saw for it was for her to sell her book because people will want to see that picture. I thought it was wrong. I thought that it was a ding. I thought it was unclassy. And not to dwell too much on that, Kathy Scott is this you know reporter that didn't know anything about hip hop, didn't know anything about Biggie. Yes, sir, El Presidente Capo status. I'm respectfully, respectfully checking back in. Now, Kathy Scott, for years I've been hearing this was Kathy Scott that was in the, I guess it's a navy blue shirt for years. I could be wrong. I don't need a bunch of new trollers, you know, on this fucking timeline. But there's reporters like this, journalists like this, that I'm about to break it down, discretion TV style. You know, Kathy Scott has made a huge virus in Tupac's legacy, Tupac's history. Kathy Scott, as we all know, she took that disgusting, disrespectful, fake autopsy picture, putting it out. She took it and put it in her book. We don't know how she got the autopsy picture, you know. Um, with 2021 vision, that's looking like Kathy Scott. I'm not trying to say this is, but hey, let's just say this is Kathy Scott. Suge walks past her, and I'm going to run this back. Suge walks past her, and she acts like she doesn't notice Suge and pays Suge's no mind. But then she turns her head. I'm going to run it back again. Discretion TV, shout out to the New One Nation. We here now. Suge walks by Kathy Scott. If this is Kathy Scott, okay? But my money is on it. I'll bet that this is Kathy Scott. She turns her head and looks. <laughs> and then she's with somebody, some dude that looks like he's the one. This piece of shit right here, he's the one that took that autopsy picture. You know, again, this is not a body double situation when I'm saying he's the one that took a picture of the body double. I'm not saying that. I don't need a bunch of trollers saying, yo, he's the one. But if this is Kathy Scott, and I'm going to bet my money on this. And this one, y'all could say I'm reaching. Because until y'all could debunk me and show me some pictures of Kathy Scott, maybe, you know, I'm going to say this is Kathy Scott. Not to mention this first edition P.B. Herman dude she has with her in the tank top looking like it's falling off of him with the ID badge acting like he's the real media. He's the one that took that fucking picture, not Kathy Scott. Kathy Scott, get dirt. Oh, how did Kathy Scott get the autopsy photo of Tupac and why was it released to her and what is your opinion of her putting that out in her book? Did that hurt the investigation? Exactly, yeah. The photo that was released, I don't know how she got it. I probably have suspicions. It wasn't released legitimately. It shouldn't have been out there. And I can tell you that it was not a police 
photo in that it was not a photograph we had taken during the autopsy because the photo that was released was a post procedure photo we don't take post procedure photos the only photos we take are of evidentiary value as in wounds or things like that where the medical examiner, the, the forensic pathologist says this is something that's relevant. We just don't take pictures of dead bodies just to do it. And we sure don't take pictures of dead bodies after they've been autopsied and sewn back up, so to speak, preparation to be transported to the mortuary for, for whatever the next of kin want done with the remains. So, you know, I think it was tacky that the picture was out there. I guess I know that uh, that's just the way it is, though. And I know right away that the uh, you know the thing was a hundred thousand dollars for a photo, an autopsy photo, and that's why our case file was locked up because we sure didn't want any of our photos released out there in public. So yeah, I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty that that particular photo was not from our file. And I, but I can't tell you who took it or who released it. Didn't know anything about hip hop, didn't know anything about Biggie nor uh, Tupac and then all of a sudden she becomes an expert uh, on Biggie and Tupac again. You get in where you fit in. You didn't fit in from the beginning so why get in and try to be a part of something because you started pulling um, uh, Source Magazine, Vibe Magazine, uh, uh, Rolling Stone articles. You start educating yourself about uh, Tupac Shakur or about Biggie Smalls and you go out and decide to write a book. You didn't live that life. You didn't know anything about that person. And I know that we have the First Amendment rights and we can uh, you know, speak and say what we want to, but there's a, a fine line between actually being someone like myself and other people that were very close to Tupac, that was with Tupac, that knew Tupac and Biggie, to be able to sit down, do a documentary, or write a story uh, from a book about these people. You, Kathy Scott, you, Anton Beatty, and I'm not picking on you two, but you two, from this interview, you're wrong. Bottom line is you're wrong because neither one of you from the beginning know or live or walk in my shoes so you can't be me and you can't question uh, the truth whether it's the truth inconsistencies or lie with me because I don't lie and I'm not inconsistent about what I thought and how I feel and I changed my mind over the period of 10 years to where what I felt then, I didn't feel now. I think Orlando Anderson's, um, that be the beating doesn't make sense. I mean, he was kicked and stomped a little bit, you know. And that 12-year-old girl recently who was pictured on videotape was beaten like crazy and police didn't do anything. They, they didn't even take him downstairs. The police didn't take, or security, take Orlando downstairs, you know, at the MGM to talk to him about that that beating he just said no he didn't he didn't want to press charges and and they sent him on his merry way maybe that was a setup i mean he was standing there waiting and lay, waiting for somebody and then tupac shows up and they start exchanging words with his entourage and everybody else and they start stomping and, and yelling and doing their silly things but it was odd that i keep saying odd but the whole thing is odd Everything surrounding the case is odd. Orlando Anderson is leaning up at a wall watching people come out of the fight. And this is near the food court. And the, and the bank of elevators is where this happened. And then you walk to the um, lobby, through the casino a bit, and then to the lobby. And um, it always struck me as, as that whole thing struck me as odd. Um, and they let him go. He did not have a ticket to the fight. He did tell people at one point and told the police that he had a ticket, but he didn't have a ticket. He did not attend the fight. He's from Compton. He had no reason to be in Las Vegas. He, um, he told some people he came here to gamble. 
he had no reason and that to me is you've you've got a guy at the scene of the crime and you have no reason for him to be in Las Vegas so why was Orlando Anderson in Las Vegas nobody has been able to answer that question and I asked the police that as well he did not attend the fight so he wasn't here for the fight and then he just happens to be at the MGM waiting for I mean how did he know Tupac was going to walk through at that time I mean maybe he was you know maybe he was all part of you know it's like an Oswald you know um, kind of thing I mean it, it's it's we have to admit there are there are parallels to this I mean there's there's a certain setup um, it know, does it it, it all very planned execution of events yeah it all it all looks planned if you if you if you lay it out and you look methodically at the case you know from beginning to end the the whole thing looks planned out I'm sure there were variations but yeah um, Orlando Anderson looks a little um, staged it looks a little planned out and variations but yeah um, Orlando Anderson looks a little um, staged it looks a little planned out and and you know an hour and a half or two hours later Tupac Shakur is shot to death and and um, it all looks as if they were trying to find a killer they could point out afterward. Am I doing okay? Yeah. You're, you're just like you're grabbing fire. everything. Yeah, you're on fire. Yeah, yeah, you're on fire. With cool. You. you know, people weren't talking to the police, but they weren't talking to anybody else either. Or they've been paid. Yeah, they've been paid, paid to be quiet. And um, it just was odd that six months later, Biggie Smalls is killed in the same way. And Yes, sir. Discretion TV, let's dig a little deeper. Kathy Scott has made a killing off of Tupac's name. If nobody made a killing with that out-of-the-country publishing company back in the 90s, the third revised edition of Pac's book, The Killing of Tupac's book, if nobody made a killing, Kathy Scott made a motherfucking killing. You feel me? Let's dig a little deeper. Las Vegas PD, they even investigated her. Um, excuse me. Las Vegas Eternal Affairs investigated her and how she got the picture. She wasn't even involved with the investigation. Who is Kathy Scott? She's deeper than a reporter. You know, the fact that Eternal Affairs in Las Vegas, and we all know so far, there's a lot of corruption going on. But the fact that they dropped the case, the investigation, after 30 days on Kathy Scott. She even claimed she got copyright. She copyrighted the picture. That means she took the picture because she's the reason why I know about the Wyclef video when he dissed Tupac in 2013, 2014 in April showers. She sued the director of the video, excuse me. She sued the director of the video, settled out, whatever. You know, Kathy Scott, man, another part of Pac's history that some people may overlook because when we actually look at the people that's rewriting Pac history, that's changing Pac's legacy, changing Suge Knight's legacy, we got a store from day one. And Kathy Scott, the fact that I just showed you, she had somebody with her, and he looked like he was grimy. He looked like he was up to, you know, little sneaky ass kids from Bel Air. You know what I mean? Drop a comment below, let me know. Discretion TV, we up out of here. Fatatino, peace. Nobody been arrested if they said they didn't want to kill Tupac. Because they're snitching to the police so they ain't not gonna just get the snitch and be smart son <laughs> because tupac not ain't dead smart as you show, tupac not dead if he was dead they'd be rushing on dude for murder you know he's somewhere smoking a cuban cigar you know what i mean uh valentino giving me suits gangsters